Hello, my crafty friends. This is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have an art journal video for you, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I am working from the mood board for the Artsy Trio Facebook group, and I'm particularly drawn to the color palette. I am starting on this piece of mixed media paper that is about five and a half by eight and a half inches. And my plan is to cover both the front and the back with this piece of text scrapbook paper. It was 12, and a 12 by 12 inches and I've cut it down to six by 12. And I will adhere both the front and back of this mixed media page to the text paper with a liquid medium. Um, I'm just using my, my one inch brush to do this. And um, liquid medium is handy because you can squirt it where you want it to go. This happens to be a gloss medium, not my favorite. I will counteract that at a later point. Um, I put the front and back on at the same time today. Not sure that I will do that again. It was a little bit difficult to trim out. I will be adding some yellow with my Distress Oxide sprays. And I have three different colors of yellow. And I am just putting my page into a spray box. And I am just going to spray each of those three colors of yellow in random patterns. One thing I will say is do not shake up and down these sprays. Make sure that you're swirling them because once you have sprayed them once and you shake them, um, it comes out the nozzle and then you have a mess in your lid. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, this is not the first page I have created for this prompt. In fact, I had a video all uploaded and live and I hated the page. So I took the video down and I recreated the page and I will put this video back up. Um, yeah, sometimes that happens. I woke up this morning, I watched the video and did not love the page, how the page turned out. I didn't like it at all. So I'm operating on the same theory, but different technique. So now that I have this kind of multi-tone yellow on my text page, I'm going to add some stenciling. I will be using some archival ink, um, vermilion and lemon yellow or something like that. And I will be using a stencil. This is a tailored expressions sunburst stencil. And I will be putting the archival ink through the stencil with a blending brush. Um, for regular ink, I have a blending brush for each color family. For my archival inks, I have one blending brush that I just clean out. So I'm starting with the darker color. The vermilion, I think, is the name of this kind of orangey yellow. And adding it just to the center. And then I want to add the rays out toward the end with the lighter yellow. I was really smart. I cleaned out my brush with a baby wipe and a microfiber cloth and did not clean off my stencil. So my lighter yellow rays did not actually stay that light. <laughs> um, yeah, so clean your stencil. Yeah, there's the end of my PSA for today. <laughs> I do like how it turned out, but I think it would have been um, more what I intended if I had just cleaned my stencil. No biggie. So this video ended up being only around 10-ish minutes long once I got all the fussy stuff edited out and sped up just a little bit, which is shorter than the other video that I took down. <laughs> okay, so to bring in a little bit of that brown, I'm going to pull out my potting soil archival ink and just use a sponge dauber to go around the edges of my page. Um, this creates a border or a frame of sorts that tells our brain to look toward the center or the inside of those line or frame edges to see the focal image that we are looking at. To incorporate the green, I have pulled out this scrap piece of um, pattern paper that is kind of that pistachio green that is in the mood board and my lawn fawn grass dies. And I am going to cut a bunch of pieces of grass out, which you can now see. <laughs> and I intend, um, I am going to ink up, there's the word I'm looking for, ink up the edges, the bottom and sides of these grassy um, pieces with the potting soil. Um, it's a little bit difficult to ink up the grassy tops with the uh, foam sponge. Um, I started to and then didn't really like how the brown was, so I thought about it for a minute um, while I was inking up the other three sides of the rest of my grassy strips. And this is just a piece of like six inch wide scrap of paper that I use those Lawn Fawn grass dies on to get as many pieces out as I could. There are two pieces that have intentionally taller borders so that I can cover up anything else. So once I figured out that I 
did not like the brown on the grass blades themselves. I pulled, I put away the sponge dauber and pulled out this archival ink in green and just a blending brush and went ahead and put some green ink onto the blades of grass. And that kind of adds the variation in the greens that you see in the mood board where they range from a really light to a kind of a, a medium toned green. Pistachio green is kind of one of my favorites right now, that kind of sea foam light. But then again, all my all greens are my favorite. The green is like my favorite color ever. Okay, I am going to adhere all my grass pieces down to my art journal page. I'm just kind of laying them out. And I figured if as long as I'm going to lay them out, I may as well tape them down at the same time. There, there's no reason to lay them all out and then pick them all back up. So I'm just kind of making sure that my original page is straightish and I will use my ATG gun. This is a double-sided adhesive to add those um, strips of pattern paper down to make kind of a, a grassy field. So one of those dies has a curved edge and one is a straight line of grass. And I'm just trying to alternate them so that I have some variation in the grass in my field. So the, the, mood that came to me when I saw these colors, this color palette was kind of like a, a serene place, right? A, a border, sorry, not a border, a field, <laughs> a, a sunset, sunrise, just kind of a serene place. And so once I had come up with that idea of serenity, I've created this focal image by, um, I just used images I found online that were free for personal use. Um, I'm not selling this item so I can use these free for personal use <laughs> images. Um, one is a stack of books. One of my serene places is in a book. Um, I have always loved reading. I can remember when I was 10, my dad would take us to the library once a week and I would come home with a stack of, at that point in my life, it was Nancy Drew's. Um, and I would read that stack of books at least two times before we went back to the library the next week during the pregnancy with my, one of my boys, I read like 75 Louis L'Amour books. I think he only published 86 books in his, under the Louis L'Amour name. And I read 75 during that pregnancy. So I can be quite a voracious reader. Um, I tend to ignore all else in the world when I read, which is why sitting in a grassy field at sunrise or sunset with a stack of books would be absolute serenity to me. No meal to prepare, no kids to get ready for bed, no, no, nothing that I'm ignoring or nothing that I am needs my attention. It is kind of a utopia for me, I suppose. I'm just going to add, add that down with the liquid medium. And then I am going to take this um, clear gesso and go over the entire page. You can see around my focal image where the page is kind of shinier and I want to eliminate that. Um, I don't necessarily... Um, have anything specific against glossy mediums or the, the gloss look. However, those pages tend to stick together, stick to each other more in my art journal, and I don't want my pages to stick together. And they don't photograph very well. <laughs> okay, so I am using a quote that I found in my Tim Holtz Chit Chat sticker book. It says, um, ordinary people can do extraordinary things, and I find that to be true in my everyday life. Most of us in this world are just ordinary people, and yet we manage to do extraordinary things. Most of the time, those things are not acknowledged by the rest of the world, but to somebody who needs um, a little bit of extra attention or love or a meal or a helping hand or a tank of gas or a mowed lawn or whatever those things are, in that minute to that person we are serving, they are extraordinary. And I find that most of us do extraordinary things um, I am outlining my quote with my Derwent Ink Tense Pencil. These um, pencils are an ink pencil in that once you activate the pigment, it becomes bright and inkish. However, once it is dry and the pigment has been fully activated, it is permanent. So the only thing left to do now is to um, add the, well, first I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign and date this page, and then I'm going to add the mood board photograph to the back of my page. This is so that when I look back at this page in the future, I will remember why I created the page that I created. I am going to punch holes in my page so that it will fit into the three ring binder that I have for my art journals. 
and then I will adhere the mood board picture to the back of my page. <laughs> I'm a little bit ahead of myself, I guess. Um, I'm just putting that down with a uh, with tape runner for my ATG gun. Wow, words today. And it's too early in the day to be this wordless. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I know this was a quick run through for an art journal page, especially. Let me know what you think in the comment. Do you often redo projects? Do you throw them away? Do you start over? Or do you keep them forever and ever? Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, give me a thumbs up, share my channel, and have a really great day. Thanks. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch, as well as a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And if you know somebody who would like it, please feel free to share. Have a great day.